Hi, Elena here, your mommy tantrum specialist. And today's episode is actually bring, going to bring it all together. You could have seen it's called Mental Fitness Introduction Part 3. So if you haven't gone through Part 1 and 2 of the podcast, uh, episodes 18, 19, I would highly recommend that because we are, we are going to build up on that. And if you're still only listening through your podcast platform, you may want to do that. But the next time you can also watch and take some notes. It might be good for you to switch over to YouTube. I'm going to give you a link to a video version of this episode. Hi on the video. Because uh, I'm sharing with you a template PDF. We are going to do an exercise today together and it's more visual. So it will actually be more beneficial if we do it together on um, on video that you can also watch and take notes. Sounds good. So you will get all the links in the, the episode description. You can give it a go and just listen through the first time around. And then because I give you timestamps in both the podcast and the YouTube version of it, you can then just quickly skip uh, right there to the exercise part uh, if you want to follow along on the video the next time. Okay, good. So mental fitness introduction part three, uh, we are going to bring it all together today. <laughs> all of that that I shared in the part one and two, because in the last episodes, we talked about how specifically, what are we doing to stay calm? You're here in this Zen Superman podcast because most likely you are a loving but stressed out mom who raises her voice at her kids more often than you would like, right? Because this is where I was, at least that's why I'm doing this podcast for you, because I want to help you out, not go through the same things that I did. I used to be the yelling mom. I used to feel super guilty and ashamed about it. I didn't know what to do, even though I was already a professional coach and I studied so many techniques and things and I just couldn't figure it out. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> and then I finally did. I did mental fitness training and practice. I did uh, trauma therapy, like for development uh, trauma. Uh, and then I then I put it together all together with my corporate coaching practice about uh, leadership and communication effectiveness. And then I kind of like molded it all together because that's what I realized that helped me the most. Uh, how I was putting all of these pieces together to become not a super mom, like 100% perfect, perfect mom. I'm not that. <laughs> and I'm telling you also about that very openly about all of my still ups and downs. But I can uh, honestly say it's about 95% better than it used to be. So this is what's possible for you too, should you choose to follow me on this journey and take my help. So we are going to continue today with that part three. Uh, I will invite you to download the PDF that I shared with you because we are going to fill in a little graphics. If you don't have it in front of you, it's okay. You can just take a piece of paper or imagine it for the moment. And you can start by drawing a big triangle in the middle of it. Okay. Big triangle and in the middle of the triangle, put there what you want the most. Like if you were not a mom who loses her temper very often, how would you show up instead? What would you have more of in your life that you really want? And I'm going to fill in that, fill in that triangle together with you because for me, that word is Zen. Like that's why this is a Zen super mom. Because for me, Zen means like calm, happy, at peace, no matter what. That's for me what Zen is. For somebody like you can put their calm. I will put calm here as well. Whatever that is, you can put it in the middle of your triangle. Now I'm putting it on a triangle. And as you could have seen like this episode, what I promised to you that we are going to bust three major beliefs that's pre that are preventing you from feeling that way already now, right? And I will, again, I will write it from my own perspective and what I hear the most from my clients. See if your um, if what comes up for you is a little bit different. Just let me know. Hmm? Email, socials, find me. Let me know. Like, yeah, but <laughs> what about this? <laughs> so I'm going to take it as what I hear the most often. So belief number one that we will bust is I cannot be calm because I have no control over my emotions. Like kind of I'm trying, I'm really doing my best, but I have no control over my emotions. So what I'm putting along one side of the triangle is no control over my emotions. You can hear me typing. 
that's what's the first side of the triangle. Now, why am I saying that this is a belief? Because if you're feeling anything like I used to feel, like it's a reality, right? I was realizing that either my I was pushing my emotions inwards. So when I was there triggered by my daughter, she was either not listening or my husband just basically took his me time and all of that work, like everything was on me. And so I was trying to swallow it. I was trying to keep it inside because I didn't want to be the mom who puts it outside, like who yells. So I was trying to put it inside. And I was trying to be really that nice mom who doesn't yell. So I was just like, eating it inside and it was eating me up inside and this is if you read uh, any of Gabor Mate's books about the body says no and stuff like this you know that this is the best recipe for disaster for getting cancer any autoimmune uh, autoimmune diseases because you are basically stucking all of this negativity and stress you're literally stressing your body it has no time to repair and rest. Therefore, it's more, much more likely to get sick sooner or later. So this is a recipe for disaster. And I knew it because my own mom got sick and she got cancer. She died. You know my story. I don't have to talk about it again. But so I felt stuck. I was like, I have no control over my emotions. Eating it inside doesn't help because I'm just going to get sick. And sooner or later, anyways, it's like in a pressure cooker cooker. I'm keeping it inside so long that then finally, when I'm the most stressed and tired, just one small trigger comes. Like my daughter does something so seemingly innocent and it goes, all goes like, wow, big monster at her because it needs to come out one way or another. Okay. So this is where I was stuck. And this is why it's a belief because it doesn't have to be that way. Aha. Doesn't have to be that way. So how do we do that? (laughs) How do we not eat those emotions inside how do we not spew them outside so that they are toxic for others not just for ourselves but how do we effectively process and manage them ha ha great question you're asking so this is exactly what i'm putting here then in green on that first side of the triangle and that's we do that by strengthening our mental muscles right strengthen mental muscles i hope my spelling is okay if you're watching the video I always get this strength in this or that way. I hope you forgive me if I have it wrong. That's what we do inside mental fitness. And this is what we talked about in the last episode of the mental fitness podcast, episode 19. What specifically do we do to stay calm? And the answer is we do picky reps. So if you, if you haven't listened to that episode, then go back i call it the zero second solution because you will also hear me talk about there that it doesn't have to take any extra time you can do it anytime anywhere on the go in the middle of that tantrum but you need to make it a regular practice pq practice because it's like thinking that you can run a marathon without no preparation without ever having run before Like that doesn't work, right? You wouldn't do that. You know that you have to train. You know that you have to prepare and practice and have a plan. This is why you need to turn your PQs into a practice. They are super simple. Uh, You will hear me talk about it in the the previous episode. You have there also some freebies and downloads, things that you can start putting into practice immediately to test it out for yourself and try. Just in case you haven't heard that episode, just so that you can catch up and be on the same page with us. PQ stands for positive intelligence quotient, like IQ is that smart brain quotient, measuring how smart your brain is and doing all of those logical operations. PQ is how strong your ability is to shift from being stressed out and in a fight or flight mode, how quickly you can shift into your thrive brain, which is the part of the brain or the side of the brain the areas responsible for intuition unconditional love empathy and all of this good stuff that we want right laser focused even in the middle of a stressful situations because it is possible and this is how by strengthening the mental muscles okay so you have all about the pq practice how to do it 
and to try it for yourself, you have it in episode 19 of this podcast, okay? So if you need to, pause here, go back, listen to it, and then come back. I'm going to continue. Second side of the triangle, the second belief we want to shift is the second reason why you tell yourself that you cannot be calm now, and which that is usually, I have no time. And this is what I thought. I have no time and I'm juggling too much. That's why I'm stressed out. And specifically in these moments when I'm the most stressed out about time, that's when I was yelling the most at my daughter. Okay, I was getting impatient. My husband hates it <laughs> till today. <laughs> and I'm like too nervous watching my watching the clock. Like, hey, we need to be moving. Like that's one thing that <laughs> stresses him always. But I felt even more, again, I was trying to eat it in. And I was thinking like, <laughs> this is my thing. So I was stressing myself out only when I felt I couldn't hold it in anymore. And I needed them to move faster. Then I started putting it outside. And even that was too stressful for them. Anyways, but this is the reason no time and juggling too much. So we are thinking, if only I had more time, uh, then I could I could be the calm mom I want. Okay. Now, why is that a belief? Why do we need to shift that? Because even then, I can guarantee you, can you think back about situations when there was like a weekend? You realistically, objectively, there was nowhere to rush and you were still stressed out. You were still yelling at your kids. So is it really about having enough time? No. It was not for me. It, it was the same for me. I felt equally stressed even during the weekends when we were all together. There was no schedule. I still felt stressed. Because it was not about somebody else putting something on my schedule. It was me putting things on my schedule. So there again, the answer is not in the outside, it's inside and how we do that. So you might be thinking, all right, but then tell me, like, what do you want to do about it? What's your magic solution? So this is it. The solution is to control the voices in your head. Control the voices in your head. And I'm not talking here about you being like schizophrenic or having multiple personality disorder, even though I am working with um, some clients who have been diagnosed even with multiple personality disorder. It works for them too, by the way. But just to calm you down, <laughs> no reason to panic. It's not that you have any of these issues. We all have voices talking in our head. And one example I use so often is that voice in my head stressing me out, either judging me, telling me I'm not good enough, uh, telling me to do things faster and better. Otherwise, I'm not worthy of anything, basically not appreciation, respect, <laughs> love, nothing <laughs> like I'm worthless. Um, the voice is stressing me about how much more effective I need to be if we talk specifically about time how I need to get things done faster uh, more effectively so that I can do it all because it's my fault that I cannot do it all and that I'm stressed out and all of these voices like that's the reason why why you're I was overfilling my schedule even at times when I managed to clear out space where I could relax those voices in my head were pushing me to do more and fill it back in with some activity. Busy, 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 busy. Because that was making me feel like, okay, now others cannot judge me because I'm doing my best. If I would take a break for myself, it felt selfish because yes, everybody's talking about the me time and blah, blah, blah. But I would feel selfish because I'm not doing my best so then others could judge me. So I will better judge myself first before they do it. <laughs> So that I avoid this public judgment, right? Like, it sounds like a crazy talk, but I bet that there's at least somebody who can identify <laughs> with the same self-talk, right? So if that's you, please know there's help. It's just a belief. Just, yeah. It's a very, very harmful one, very serious one. It felt, It feels heavy. It feels real. But it's a belief, it's a perspective that we can choose to change, we can choose to shift. And how? That's what I was telling you, by controlling those voices in your head, by first getting to know them, 
So what are the voices in your head? And that's, we all have the inner critic. If you've noticed, you have it. The inner critic who's judging you and others who com who's comparing constantly you and others might be critical to you, but also like everybody outside. But it's not all as if that was not enough. Huh? But we also have nine other, we call them saboteurs in mental fitness. And by the way, I talked about them in episode 18 of the podcast, I think in the mental fitness intro part one. So if you want to know more about who they are, if you want to test which of them you have, which of them are the strongest, I gave you a link in the episode 18 of the mental fitness podcast, and you can do a free assessment to find out which of them are hijacking your life, basically. For me, it was hyperachiever, like trying to do as much as possible, trying to achieve more and more and more and more. And once I get one thing done, like one big milestone, like any certification or a big project finished or great success at work or with my clients, that voice would let me celebrate maybe for three seconds. And then it would set up a new goal, even bigger, even higher. <laughs> So I could never rest. I felt like I had to keep chasing bigger and better and it was never enough. So that was my hyperachiever. That was controller, perfectionist. When I became a mom, I uh, got a victim as well and pleaser in me. Like all those voices telling me I need to take care of others first before I can take care of myself. That it's selfish to tell others what I need, that they should be somehow mind reading and doing it before I even say that and blah, 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 blah. So in the inner critic plus nine other kinds of characters, that's who we all have in our heads. I explain why I give you the link to do your assessment to get more aware and more familiar with who you have inside and then inside all of my programs and one-to-one -one, like individual practice what I do I give you the antidotes the antidotes meaning like how to deal with them <laughs> I give you the help how to if not make friends with them, how to stop letting them control your life and running your life and how to manage them effectively. Okay. And for me, the biggest success where I realized I managed to make peace with most of my saboteurs was the moment when I decided to shave my head. Because if you know anything from my story, I have a shaved head, not because I have a cancer. I'm knocking on the wood. I'm healthy. <laughs> But I decided to shave my head when I decided when I realized that I no longer have to wait for approval or um, like for how would I say that <laughs> that I'm no longer affected with about what other people think about me. I always kept my hair long because I thought it was likable. I wanted to be likable. I wanted people to not get triggered when they see me and even though I always well always I always wanted to have long hair because I could never have it in the past but once I had it I realized my next dream was to shave it to feel free and not attached to my looks and <laughs> and what other people think about me and I thought I couldn't do it until I'm at least like 78 years old and then I will not give a f about anything and anybody what they think and only then I realized well actually I can do it already now I don't give a fuck about what others think. That's when I shaved my head and I keep it shaved ever since. It's been more than a year now. So this is what becomes possible for you. <laughs> you don't have to shave your head. Um, don't take any ideas. I didn't tell anybody what to do with this. But that's just to illustrate what level of shifts you will start noticing once you start clearing out all of that junk that those nasty voices tell you in your head. Okay. So this was the second belief that we shifted. And now finally, number three. What is the third reason why you think you cannot become? The first reason we had no control over my emotions. Second was no time. And the third that I usually hear is either difficult kids. Difficult kids or relationships in general. Like it's others who are difficult. So help me fix them. That's what most of the parenting books are about, right? 
how to fix your kids or how to fix your communications to, the, to your kids so that you can manipulate them better and they listen more. But if you've tried any of these, you realize that doesn't really work. Huh? Why is that? Why is that this is a belief that you need to be shifting? If you've listened a bit to my podcast, then you know. Because by putting the blame on others, by making them the problem, you're making yourself helpless. You take all of your power away. Because they say, they have the power to make me mad. And I cannot do anything about that. That's what you're doing, basically. And that's why we are shifting it, because you have much more power than you realize. Once you do those two sides of the triangle that we just mentioned, once you start doing picky reps to calm down in the moment, to detach from those voices in your head and realize that they are lies, that inner critic, hyperachiever, controller, pleaser, victim, whatever those voices are telling you in your head that those are lies, once you get that, then you're able to drop into your what we call sage in mental fitness. That's the counterweight of the saboteurs. On one side of the brain, that survival side of the brain that gets triggered and stressed, that's when you hear your saboteurs shouting at you. This is not fair. They should be helping me. How come they're not respecting me? They're not listening. I'm so stressed out. Nobody is helping me. I don't have enough time to do this. I'm a complete failure. I'm the worst mom in the world. Those are all the voices of your saboteurs that are stressing you out in that survival brain. Thanks to the help of PQ reps, what you do is that you switch over to that laser focused, calm mind where you get access to compassion and empathy for yourself and others. And you get access to the soft whisper of your sage. You can imagine your sage as the older, wiser self. Like yourself when you are 80, 90 years old. You've seen the world. You've lived your life to the fullest, exactly the way that you wanted. That's the older, wiser self. And that voice is not yelling. That voice is whispering. That's why you cannot hear it most of the time. Right. So this is what we do here. Switch over to Sage and make your Sage stronger. Because once you do that, you're able to connect. And you have access to unconditional love. Not just to others, but first of all, to yourself. Because that's where it starts. You cannot give unconditional love to others unless you give it to yourself first. And I gave you, we talked about this, like if this is an aha moment for you right here, I'm going to give you another pointer to episode, I think it's episode 11 of the podcast that talks about unconditional love and how you can practice uh, to build it up for you first, giving unconditional love to yourself. Okay. So this is shifting. This is the shift that we need to do with that third belief. It's not about others being difficult. But it's about doing all that, like going through that journey of disconnecting through those voices in your head that are stressing you out, switching to the part of the brain that's responsible for compassion and unconditional love. Because only from that point, you can apply any of those parenting techniques or relationship management, whatever, only from that place. If you do it from the place of being triggered, you've probably done it. You know what the effect is. Like it's not productive. It's not going to work. It's going to trigger the other party only more. If you're trying to reinforce any parenting technique while you're already mad, then your kids will most likely not respond the way they are supposed to do, right? Or the same with your husband or partner. When you ask for your for help, when you are already mad, you will do it in a way that will make them mad too. And then you're wrapped up in your saboteur dance. <laughs> like It's both of you being triggered and that's not a good place to, to have any positive outcome, right? So this is what we do on the third side of the triangle. And how specifically we do that? By learning about the sage. 
and the superpowers, how I call it, the first power superpower I can already tell you now. There are five of them. Are there? I think so. Five sage superpowers. Let me just type it. Superpowers. The first of them is empathy. And it really comes from that compassion, as I as I mentioned. But you can do that only once you're calm down. That's why you need steps one and two. That's why you need to shift those two beliefs first before you're able to access your sage. And that intuition, all that wise intuition, brain, all the access to all of your all of those collections of your experiences and and much more many more options than just black and white or black and black which is what you see in that tunnel vision when you get stressed and triggered right then you see then you either don't see any options you don't see any way how to how to effectively deal with that position or situation to get in some good outcome you don't see how you can tell your kids to brush their teeth even though you've said it already five times and they're all ignoring you you just you're completely clueless right so this is what needs to happen first one two three okay that's what i wanted to share with you today so i will look forward to hearing from you if you have anything else around your triangle any other beliefs why you believe you cannot be zen calm whatever it is that you're after right now let me know usually it falls into one of these categories but if it's something completely different, let's let's check in. Let's see what it is for you. This was also an insight into how I work. Because once you download that PDF, or if you're looking at the screen right now, if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you will see I call it the Zen Superman Method. And I really want you to know this is just a name. It's a name that resonated the most with me, that described what I wanted. I wanted to feel Zen, like calm. Even though I still had that tendency to be a super mom, to do everything that I can, <laughs> to feel good about myself, that I'm a good mom. But this is not to make myself into any kind of guru or a priest or like, look at me, I'm a perfect super mom. I'm not. <laughs> I'm far from. But this is kind of the uh, embodiment of what I know it's possible. Okay. And this is the method. That's the structure framework that I used to teach inside my mental fitness bootcamp and inside my one-to-one -one, uh, practice, coaching practice. So do the exercise. Let me know how it went for you. Let me know what aha moments were the most powerful for you here. And if you are intrigued by any of this, if you're curious, if you would like to get this done, then I will invite you to reach out to me, either send me an email or DM me on any social media platform where you can find me and DM me either one-to-one -one or a bootcamp. Like my bootcamp is the group program one-to-one -one is my individual coaching practice. So if you're interested in either of them, just DM me this code word bootcamp or one-to-one -one, and I'm going to get back to you and we will have a conversation about uh, what exactly do you need and how we could get it done together. Because this is by no means a cookie cutter. I know that you are unique. Your story is uh, unique and specific. And uh, I'm here to make it fit for you. Right? So if you would like the help now, then uh, this is your moment to reach out. So I hope this was useful. Uh, I know I was giving you lots of pointers. <laughs> So I hope you're not dizzy from jumping all over the podcast episodes. I'll try to make it nice and clean for you in the description so that you don't get lost. And I will look forward to hearing from you how it went. Take care, super mom. Bye.